If you're watching this, you may be a person who is sitting there with a really good technology business idea. You've been thinking about it for a long amount of time and maybe you've even been talking to people about it and you're convinced that, hey, there is a real market opportunity here. Now, one temptation that is going to come up is let's go and build this as fast as possible and now that I'm convinced, the faster I build this, you know, the faster I'm going to be in market. And if you're in this mode of thinking, then I, I completely understand because you think that the sooner we can get to touching and feeling our product, our application, our website, then it's going to be real now, right? And I'm going to grow this business. However, there are a few traps here. I'm Arya Chidasi from Ingenesis. And at Ingenesis, we use the world's first venture building framework called the Genesis Framework every day with technology business owners building out and scaling their ventures. Now I remember a company approaching us when we were interviewing them for our ventures portfolio and they were saying, oh, we've spent all of this time, there's three of us as, as co-founders, we've spent two years on this product, we've spent about half a million dollars building it and finally it's done, right? And you know, they were so proud, but then for some reason there was this sort of blank look in their face. And they said, we just have one question for you guys. And we said, okay, what's that? And they said, look, we, we're really proud of our product, but we're just really flawed. How do we get our first customer? Right? And we realized that they had spent all of these two years in this bubble and they had spent far too long before they asked this critical question, which relates to whether they knew that there was a market need or not. Now there was a study by CB Insights and they had a questionnaire and an interview with all of these startup technology companies that ended up failing. And they ranked every single reason why that technology company failed. And it turned out that number one, the biggest reason why they failed at 40% of those businesses was that there was no market need for what they had gone and built. My question to you is, are you really self-confident with what you're building or have you got external confidence and do you have other people telling you that this is a good idea as well? Now, what's one practical way that you can actually address this without going on to building your whole product? You can go and build a UI and UX prototype. This is where you have every single screen designed and it's all linked together so it feels like your actual product but it actually processes nothing on the back end. It costs a fraction of the price and you can have it on your iPhone, iPad, your, your desktop, and you can go and show real customers and you can get their feedback. If they come back and say, hey, not only do I love your idea, I want to buy this, well, that's where you have a very strong argument for your product need. The other thing you can do is what we call a non-product trial. This is where you offer the same value of your product but on, in a services way. So some of the early uh, online delivery food programs, what they did is they had a very simple website where people could order and instead of building a very sophisticated, smart, automated system, they would get people to order online, uh, they would take their order, receiving it on email and call up behind the scenes, the restaurant and say, hey, customer ABC just ordered you know, some Pad Thai noodles for you and they're gonna come uh, pick it up in, in five minutes, right? So this is what we call a non-product trial. They're able to replicate the same value and get real customers doing what they do, but they did it without building out the whole software. The second area that is critical for you to understand before you dive in and start building out your technology venture is knowing about technology scalability from day one. You see, many people dive in and the thing that they are thinking is, I've got to reduce my costs as much as possible to reduce the risk. And unfortunately, unless you set yourself up ready to win in the technology game, then you're putting a huge cap on the potential. One of the areas is setting up your team and your technology to make sure that it is scalable. 
Well, you might say, hold on a second, what does scalable even mean? Because it gets thrown around a lot. Well, let me tell you. At the beginning, you may be able to create a website or an app that can serve 100 customers, 200 customers, 300 customers, and the app works completely fine. But then as you build up and it gets more and more popular, you're then serving 10,000 customers, 100,000 customers, all in a very short period of time, maybe one or two hours. And what tends to happen if your product is not scalable, when you start hitting numbers like 10,000 people per hour, the software breaks down. You know, bugs pop up, errors pop up, it becomes far too slow such that people go, what on earth is this? I can't even use this and they leave and you lose the customers that you've worked hard to earn. So how do you prevent this? In the beginning of the journey, whoever you are working with in terms of a technology team, in terms of your developers, or if you're finding a partner agency to work with, you need to ensure that they are asking the questions, are we making our software product scalable so it can take hundreds of thousands of customers you know, if we need that? It doesn't mean you have to pad everything out from day one, but if your software and technology team are not asking these types of questions, well, that's a red flag. So I'd like you to put yourselves in our shoes for a quick moment as venture builders. And we interview hundreds of startup owners, innovators, and founders every month. When we hear about the whole future of the software product relying on a single hero developer to do everything, we get very concerned. Why is that? Well, we did an another article on ingenesis.io about all of the different skill sets you need in a technology team to build a, a solid technology product. And we're talking about five or six different university degrees. So when someone says that they have a hero developer, either one, they are a freak of nature and that they have somehow done six degrees in one. And I mean, this does happen, but this, firstly, the statistics are ridiculously low. Secondly, that person usually knows their worth and they are out making a lot of money. So if they are relying on just a hero developer, that's a big red flag and we know they haven't done the thinking to understand what it really takes to build a large scale technology business. So let's recap what this means for you. You've got your idea, you're really excited and it's time to build out your software. Well, firstly, slow down. Remember to ask yourself, do I really believe there is a market need here or not? And how do I know that? Do I have evidence that shows me that there is that need? And secondly, if you're starting to build a technology team or, or work with a partner, make sure you're asking them about scalability and planning for growth. If you're about to build up and you're asking these questions, you're setting yourselves up for a really good future.